guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show. We give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, Mark Ellis. Welcome one and all to the best movie show in the galaxy, live from our recording studio here in beautiful Sokovia. And uh, it's a very exciting day to be talking about news, and I'm thrilled to be joined by a panel of all-stars. Also here, John Schnapp. That's right, when he says all-stars, <laughs> He's talking about Frosty <laughs> and his very special friend, Chili. Oh, they're going to say someone else. Perry what? Nemiroff also Oh, here. boy. I don't even know what to say about that. But, Schnapp, I'm very jealous of your T-shirt right now. It's, it's a little distracting. Awesome. Yeah. What, this, this awesome pinhead Rubik's Cube masterpiece that I purchased at Monster Palooza this past weekend? Yeah, that's right. Let me right. ask you a question. Why is Pinhead good at solving a Rubik's Cube? Is, like, what's the connection there? Does he just have a lot of free time when he's not torturing people? We have lots of time for you, Mark Ellis. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> point taken. Uh, before we get to our first story, we want to remind you guys that occasionally we get into territory that could be labeled by some as slightly spoiler-tastic. So I don't think this first story is a big spoiler, but we want to warn you guys just in case we're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy 2. There's a little bit of tidbit. It's some rumor stuff that's been going around the internet. We're going to talk about it, and Ashley is also going to remind you that this may indeed be a tiny little spoiler. Yeah, we'll give them a signal when they can turn their volume back on. Oh, yeah, that? wait, can I do the what, signal? What's the signal? The signal just this just this. me waving okay. frantically okay. yeah all right Nathan Fillion and James Gunn go way back after working together on Slither and Gunn's first superhero movie, Super. So it's no surprise now to learn that Fillion will appear again in Gunn's follow-up to Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, sort of. Photos from the Atlanta set reveal not only an Earthbound sequence being shot, but a movie theater with posters for the Simon Williams Film Festival. Fans will recognize the name of Williams as the alter ego of Marvel's Wonder Man. The character began as a super strong and invulnerable henchman for Baron Zemo, who will be in Captain America Civil War, played by Daniel Bruhl, eventually becoming an actor and stuntman. The spoof movie posters feature filling as Simon in titles such as Oh Rebecca, Haxton 2, and a biopic about Tony Stark. No word yet if this is the extent of Fillion's role in the movie or if it's setting the stage for his character later on down the line. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 will be released on May 5th, 2017. Mark, what are your thoughts about Fillion's potential career in Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Well, my thoughts are that it's very nice to see Nathan Fillion back in Guardians of the Galaxy again, maybe in a more recognizable role. I tend to believe this is just having some fun. It doesn't seem like they're trying to set up this character to have all these adventures and star in a film down the line. I would look at Nathan Fillion more like the way they utilize the great Bruce Campbell in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, where it's like he's going to pop in as a character and it's it might harken back to some great comic book lore, but it's not necessarily going to have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, impact on the plot details of this movie or future films. That's my read on it. Perry, what would be your take when you see these posters, you hear this news story? I'm thinking that it's just going to be confined to this one thing. It's a fun thing to look at, to see his face on these posters, and I kind of want to see some of these movies that they're teasing, yeah. too. I hope maybe, you know, a DVD bonus feature type thing, but I don't think it's going to extend beyond that. The only thing that disappoints me is, you know, it's an Easter egg. You want to get the excitement of an Easter egg in the movie, and now there's set pictures, so it is spoiled. So I, that makes me a little sad. I, I get that. I would rather have like a tiny Easter egg like this that's of less consequence. Uh, that's fine to tell me true. about. I just don't want to know any huge plot points. I don't even want to know what's on the new mixtape. So, Schnepp, your take on this. Is Nathan Fillion going to have a huge role in an upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy picture? James Gunn, I want to see this trailer. Simon Williams is Tony Stark in Weapons of War. <laughs> Just make a two-minute trailer with Nathan Fillion as Tony Stark, because that's one of the posters. That would be awesome. I think, yeah, it's a great Easter egg. I don't really see the character Simon Williams fitting that much into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, in the comic books, he basically was like an imprint that vi that's what was became Vision. So you find out later that Scarlet Witch and Vision and him, they have a lot of issues. And I don't think they're going to get really into that with this you know, the new cinematic universe. So I think it's just a, a really cool Easter egg. That's right. And uh, we're going to find out for sure in just over a year, guys. You realize that? May 5th, 2017, we get another Guardians of the Galaxy adventure. And with that, I get to do this. Okay, we're done. Done with spoilers, <laughs> and we're done for the rest. Now everybody can come back and enjoy us on Movie Talk. Ashley, what's our first non-spoiler-tastic story? After the smashing success of The Jungle Book and the live-action Cinderella surpassing expectations, Disney 
Disney's winning game of live action remakes and adaptations will continue moving forward far into the future. In an announcement yesterday, Disney claimed five new dates to release three new untitled fairy tale movies, along with two live action movies that are also untitled. The five movies will most likely match up with some previously announced movies in development, including Cruella, a prequel to 101 Dalmatians starring Emma Stone, Ava DuVernay's A Wrinkle in Time adaptation, Tim Burton's live action Dumbo movie, The Jungle Book 2, The Jungle Cruise starring The Rock, Maleficent 2 with Angelina Jolie, and a live action Tinkerbell movie starring Reese Witherspoon. Shnep, what do you think about the new releases coming from Disney? Well, they all sound really fun. I mean, I think uh, the Tim Burton's Dumbo is the one that really intrigues me. I think, you know, his uh, his specific style will, will really lend itself to a live action Dumbo. Um, Reese Witherspoon is Tinkerbell. That's that's a weird one for me, but, you know. Well, she's, a, she's, a, she's a tiny little sprite. Well, you know? yeah, I, I guess, you know, but... Uh, What's the other one? Uh, Maleficent 2. That could be pretty fun. I, I didn't hate the first Maleficent. I thought it was pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Oof. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, okay. I, I didn't hate watching it. I just hated what they did to the lore, which would be my concern about any of these movies coming out. So the one that naturally sets off the alarms in my head would be Emma Stone as Cruella de Vil. It's like, what are you going to do with that? Is it going to be the same kind of thing where she was just this pleasant, fun Emma Stone, you know, half Asian person. And then all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> no, something happened and, and a dog bit her and now she hates everybody else. Like, I, I don't like humanizing the Disney villains too much. Maleficent, it was like... Now she's this well-rounded person. I'm almost rooting for her to get back to being a nice human being. I don't really want that out of Maleficent. I never wanted that, and I definitely don't want that out of Cruella de Vil. Just some people can just be born evil. Just They want to watch the world burn. That's how I look at Cruella de Vil. So as long as you're not giving two of a sympathetic lens to her story, then I could be cool with this. But overall, I mean, look, I am fascinated by a Tim Burton live-action hmm. Dumbo movie. I don't know how the hell you pull it off. I don't know if you're going to make me cry like the other Dumbo does. You need to update Dumbo, by the way. If you've seen the movie, it's... <laughs> uh, it's so 50s. if you do that, I, Jungle Book 2 is obvious to me. Um, Maleficent 2, do not care about. I think a Tinkerbell movie could be fun. I think Tinkerbell movie with Reese Witherspoon could be very, very fun. Perry, you hear all these movies. Which one is... Uh, looking pretty exciting to you. I think I'm with you with Emma Stone as Cruella, but you guys know me at this point. I'm really sensitive when it comes to animal violence. So yes, seeing are. 101 Dalmatians is one thing because it's animated. God, I hope she's not that terrible to the puppies because I might be crying along with all the kids in the movie theater. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm dead serious. I mean, Jungle Burke had me a little sensitive, so. <laughs> right, right, right. But I, I'm psyched to see what they do Perry, with Jungle. This is, this is a fun note. Uh, at the production meeting, Perry got mad at me because I was wearing a John Wick shirt. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, if you've I'm, seen John Wick, you know why. I'm glad I can't see the puppy from this angle. Right. We'd have a problem right here on the show. Sit like this. But I'm really yeah. curious to see what they do with Jungle Book 2 because, I mean, uh, what is Jungle Book 2? Where do you go from here? I don't really know. Or there was an animated Jungle Book 2, wasn't there? there and then was, nobody, it was nobody was saw it? Video I never heard of it. I don't think it really exists. Well, no, there, there's like 80 Aladdin movies. I know. But, you know, you, you had The Return of Jafar, you had The Sands of Time, you had all but these Aladdin None of those movies. are like official, even though they are official, they don't really count. Sure, yeah, we, you're not canon. It's not, it's not canon. Well, the Jungle Book book. 2 is definitely going to be canon. Yeah, where do you go from there? Because Mowgli. I, he, he comes back and, he, and, and you know, I don't want to spoil the movie for people, but I, it is interesting to see where they're going to take that. Having said all that, though, and we had somebody write into us in Mailbag about a week ago and say, hey, could you just do a live action, which would be like the motion capture, whatever technology they use in Jungle Book, and just have animals in there? Or do you need some sort of human anchor to help tell the story? Wow. And I don't think you need a human anchor. No. I think that the way the animals looked in Jungle Book, I would love to see an adventure just with them and not seven you know a, a, a seven-year-old dope running around thinking he's a wolf like i don't need that in the jungle book too i can yeah. just go for the animal it's Maybe. not a crazy thing to think about either because it's not like the animals don't speak they look real and they talk so that's Ooh. kind of all the character you need there yeah, yeah their face moves i mean do they have emotion in there right you know, the I, fur ruffles you could have Mowgli come back when he's like 30 at the end just to say hi and then they sing a song I love the idea we're kicking around. Ashley, yeah. let me toss it to you. Do you want to see any of these live action um, Disney movies that are possibly on you their know, slate? You know, you guys are like talking down Emma Stone in this 101 Dalmatians thing. I I'm really intrigued by this idea. I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm really intrigued by it because I love Emma Stone and 
I just, I have a lot of trust in Disney. I mean, obviously they are so successful. I feel like they're, all these movies are in good hands, obviously. It's going to be really interesting to see what they do with Maleficent 2. If Disney oh God, realizes yeah. that, okay, look, because they knocked Cinderella out of the park live action, they, they knocked Jungle Book out of the park. With Maleficent, whether you like it or dislike it, it got some critical backlash. Audiences weren't in love with it yeah. like they were these other movies. When I went so. to see it, my hopes were like really high for it, and I was kind of let down. I'm not so gonna maybe lie. they're turning the tide with Maleficent too. They're like, yeah, let's just make her evil and show you the Maleficent that we want to see. But you know what? You know what? A good way to see Maleficent is with zero expectations. Yeah. Like I went in. That's why I didn't hate it. I was like, you know what the right. best part about Maleficent is? I think Maleficent two should just be about Sam Riley's character because he was my favorite part. He plays like her raven buddy. Mm -hmm. He's the best part in the entire movie. I just want all of him. We could do it. Well, you guys are lighting up the chat board right now. And please continue to do so and comment. Let us know which of these live action possibilities do you most want to see. And now we go back to somebody who definitely doesn't have horns on her head. Those are just beautiful Princess Leia buns. What's up Thank next, you. Ashley? We're going into buy or sell. Oh, sweet. Buy or sell <laughs> is the part of the show where I'm supposed to introduce and I just didn't. We buy or sell a topic that is brought up to us by Ashley and then we defend our point to the death. All right, Empire Magazine is moving on from their superhero coverage to busting out some ghosts. The Ghostbusters remake, directed by Paul Feig, is currently featured on the cover of the upcoming issues, featuring the all-female cast with a familiar ghost taking center stage, Simer. Along with the covers, a trio of banners were also released, showing characters Kristen Wiig, Kate McKinnon, and Patty Jones, accompanied by what appears to be some of their catchphrases. Along with Wig, McKinnon and Jones. The movie will also star Melissa McCarthy, Charles Dance, Michael Kenneth Williams, and Chris Hemsworth. The film opens in theaters July 15th. Perry, buy or sell these covers and banners from Ghostbusters. <laughs> these are awful. <laughs> I, I have to sell them. I mean, look, look at this. I mean, especially the main cover over there. I mean, how many girls out there? Oh, let's let's jump and smile. I, there's no effort. It's almost like there was meant to be something in the background of that, and they just forgot to put it there. <laughs> and then there's this other one with Slimer here. It's almost like they had a shot behind they, they had another shot of all four of them yeah. and they forgot to move remove the layer in photoshop because not only do you see Kristen wig's head popping out awkwardly in the background but if you look underneath there's like another gun there like that does not belong there yeah i i i sell these and i hate to do it because i didn't hate the ghostbusters trailer like some other people did i thought it at least showed some promise into this new world but this is like Look, whether you loved or you hated that Ghostbusters trailer or you just felt indifferent about it, if you are the marketing team behind this movie, you have to realize that not everybody has universal applause for your movie so far. So you need to do some kick-ass marketing. And this was totally not it at all. This is like, I don't understand how this stuff gets on the street. I like the Empire <laughs> cover with Slimer on it, okay? If, like Perry, you Photoshop out the other weird things that are just lurking in the background, just show us Slimer. Do you really like... Or is anybody going to see that and see the word Ghostbusters and be like, oh, is this Ghostbusters? No, we know who Slimer is, okay? We know who Slimer is. You don't have to have anybody else on that cover. And the other, with them jumping out, I just don't get what they're doing. It, it feels like an unfinished product got leaked out into the world. Like, it, it's like they just, they're just giving up on marketing for this movie. Then they're just relying on the name alone to just, oh, don't worry, it's Ghostbusters, it's gonna do great. Not if you keep putting this stuff out. I still believe in your movie. I think it's gonna be hilarious. Please stop letting me down mm. by putting this kind of stuff out because it's, it's just Bush League to me. It there's, just doesn't feel professional. There's so many iconic Ghostbusters elements, too, that could have filled the frame in the background, which is yeah. really weird to me. I mean, they have everything. Shots there. of New York. Shots is of New York. It, a building. Anything. A certain car. Yeah. Come on. Now, yeah. give us a positive spin on this. Okay. Please. Booyah. <laughs> Emphasis on the cell. Um, I'm going to have to sell all of these images. If Photoshop existed in 1984, then possibly that bad airbrushing shadow on the very sparse and kind of boring main Empire cover would have been cool like in 1984 with a bunch of text mm -hmm. so that was my I was like looking at this and I was like oh that's just the unfinished cover and they're gonna have a ton of text and all this other stuff on top of it because there's no way that can actually be the real cover 
there's absolutely no way that that can actually be the uh, the finished cover. That's I'm still until I see it on the newsstands, I don't believe that that's the final cover. But yeah. does Empire ever reveal a magazine cover without? Do um, they do well, it without they do, the, they show the text? You, on the side? They show you without the text. Yeah, so it's just the the still. They did it with uh, Batman v Superman. They showed Clark and and Batman okay. and Superman. And, and I'm trying to make an excuse for them. I guess I've no, seen fuller I, images from them it's before. Just, no, I you mean, know, it is. It feels very rushed, and it's. You know, I mean, the picture behind Leslie is just kind of like I'm. Kind of, I was half joking when I said it's like first year Photoshop. It's like a glow filter. It's just really kind of bargain basement. And I don't know who's in charge of designing uh, these promotional aspects for Ghostbusters, but I highly suggest you fire them immediately and get someone else <laughs> because these suck. So it's like it's a bummer to see this. I mean. I didn't hate the, the the international Ghostbusters trailer, and I still have hope. I'm I'm hoping that when it's released, we didn't see anything, and they just showed us some of the clips that were very familiar, like as in from a reboot remake kind of you know it's like a direct lift from the original '84 Ghostbusters, and all the original really fun cool stuff that Paul Feige and the gals came up with is going to be in the film. So I'm holding out, but these images are are horrendous. Yeah, I mean, stop it, doing your movie a disservice. Like this isn't even though it's Ghostbusters. And everybody knows Ghostbusters and is fans of the original one. Like, th th it, we're not automatically going to see this movie. So stop treating it like it's a given. We're all paying 12 bucks. You have to do a better job selling your movie, guys. And not only is it not bringing the fans back, that kind of stuff is not going to bring newcomers in either. Right. So yeah. I don't know who they're going for at this point. So we kind of sell it. Okay, what's the next story? THR is reporting that Sony is in the process of closing deals with director Rob Letterman and writer Darren Lemke to return for another round of thrills and chills in a sequel to Goosebumps. No word just yet on whether Jack Black will return as author R.L. Stein, though as of now, reps are meeting with the studio and the plan will be for Black to return. No plot information on the sequel has been revealed. Goosebumps was a solid performer for the studio, generating $80 million domestically and another $77 million internationally on a budget of $58 million. No release date has been set. Mark, buy or sell a Goosebumps sequel. I'm going to just ever so slightly be the optimist and buy this. And you can bet your bottom dollar that that release date that they don't have yet is probably going to be somewhere around Halloween. It made a lot of sense for the first Goosebumps. And there's enough elements of that movie that I'm like, yeah, we can have some more good stories in here and even better stories than the first Goosebumps movie, which I didn't love at all. But it made money. It was a modest budget. It did OK, both here in domestically and internationally. And look, R.L. Stein has written so many Goosebumps tales and I think one of the problems, because my nonfiction girlfriend, you know, she grew up loving Goosebumps, and so she's like, yeah, this is all great to see all these characters, but there's so many great stories with each one of these guys, and you really just scratch the surface of it. So if you can just focus on a few of them, and make them more prominent figures. Like, I would pay to see a movie. I don't even need the humans in there. I just want to see that ventriloquist dummy. Like Slappy. I, yeah, I'll see three movies. I'll see the Slappy trilogy, and that'll be better than what the first Goosebumps was. I didn't think it was awful, but there's better stories you can tell in this universe. Hopefully we'll get one, right, Perry? I've actually never seen the first Goosebumps. I think it came out when I was covering New York Comic Con last year, so I completely missed it for that reason. But I was a big Goosebumps fan as a kid. I'm still obsessed with Say Cheese and Die for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> reason that was the one I always had with me in sleepaway camp and it's actually still in my childhood bedroom now at my parents place and I love it but I'm curious to see where they go with two because wasn't the whole reason that this Goosebumps movie actually got made is because they came up with the idea to make it about his his life and his mm -hmm. creations and not specifically one of these stories right I mean it's it, it's R.L. Stein it, Jack Black plays R.L. Stein and so it's like oh yeah these are my stories coming to life so it is a I understand it's a conglomeration of all these things but when they're all all coming to life at the same time you really don't get a chance to focus it just no. it gets very clunky and i know schnepp you saw it you weren't the biggest fan of the first goosebumps movie do you buy or sell this story um i'm gonna half buy it uh, yeah I, I didn't like the first goosebumps movie i mean jack black is an incredible performer he just it, it, he didn't uh, like you know i've seen him do so much better like so this was like him playing rl stein plus this isn't a biography pick this is like He's like a fake R.L. Stein. You know what I mean? It's like he's in there. He's like, hey, what do you you kids get off of my lawn, R.L. Stein? You know yeah. what I mean? It's like uh, 
And I thought the characters, the creatures that they picked, they just stayed with the Yeti, they stayed with the Wolfman, and there's so many other amazing creatures, even on the poster, that you barely get to see, that I was disappointed, even on that front, let alone, I thought the, the movie kind of sucked. Would it be a bummer the, if they didn't bring the kids back? Because I know the the article that's reporting this didn't have uh, Dylan Minnette, I don't Ode think you need those, the, their story ends with the film. So I think that story closes. I would love to see Slappy show up and be like, hey, like a Crypt Keeper, and get then you get to see like maybe three or four goosebump stories. That's my pitch to you. Whoa, Suck it. Yeah, like well, Tales from awesome. the Dark Side where yeah, you just get little vignettes. That would be amazing because I don't think they, uh, my, me personally, it didn't really work, the film. I'm glad it made money. I'm glad they can keep doing it. But man, Slappy as the Crypt Keeper, like chucking in a couple of those freaky goosebumps and then throwing R.L. Stein, Jack Black, like, Slappy, what are you doing? And have a sub story weaving through it. Anyway, Jack Black, he should be in Ghostbusters. I love, well, not that idea, but I love the Crypt Keeper idea. Anytime yeah. you use the Tales from the Crypt Crypt Keeper to sell me on a movie project, now this thing's a huge buy. Thank you, John Schnepp. Right. I now spent more money on this stupid Goosebumps 2 movie than I ever intended to. Ashley, what's our next topic? From a report in THR, Lionsgate is moving forward with its adaptation of the video game property Borderlands, hiring Section 6 writer Aaron Berg to pen the script. The project, based on Gearbox Software's popular first-person shooter game that launched in 2009, sees a story set on a planet called Pandora, a frontier land that's been abandoned by a mega corporation. Arad Productions, run by Avi Arad and his son Ari Arad, is producing the film, which some describe as Mad Max in space. Source to say it's expected to be an edgy R-rated take on the material. There is no word on a release date as of yet. Schnapp buy or sell an R-rated Borderlands adaptation. I, well, the question is more whether I buy or sell an Avi Arad on me, you know, production of, <laughs> of Borderlands. Get it right this time, Arid, or however you say your name. Um, anyway, I love <laughs> Borderlands. I played the first game and I got to a certain point where I just couldn't, I couldn't open a gate or something and I threw the controller. But it's very fun. It's very violent. Those weird dudes with the gun, they're very hard to kill. If you've never played Borderlands, you should get on it. It really does have that post-apocalyptic Mad Max flavor to it. You're in these weird border towns. You know, you got to help uh, clear it up, clear them out, you know, kill these weird mutants. It's a really fun game. You know, I don't know. Just the name Arya Rod just makes me upset. So I don't know if I'm, I can buy or sell it. I'm going to medium buy it. Well, it is still Borderlands, and it is still a huge game that was for, you know, Xbox uh, 360 and PlayStation 3, I think, or maybe it's made it a PlayStation 4. It's, I don't know what the kids do these days, but this premise sounds like it's R-rated Mad Max in space gold, right? So I'm going to buy it for right now, because I don't know a lot about Borderlands. I never played the game. I tend to get frustrated with the, the role-playing games, but it also had that first-person shooter dynamic that I think you could totally make a really cool movie on this. The question, Perry, is there's so many video game properties that are trying to get off the ground right now, and I think a lot of them are going to rely <laughs> on the success or failure of Warcraft to kind of get the go-ahead with that green light. Do you agree with that sentiment that we need to have a great video game movie come out before we can get something like Borderlands greenlit, or do we go ahead and and get Borderlands up and running. I don't think so, because look at how many uh, video game adaptations have already happened, even though none of the ones that come before it work. They Very still true. keep coming. But I mean, in this one's case, I've never played Border. I feel like every time I come on Movie Talk, I add another video game to my to-do list. <laughs> There's a lot of games I need to be playing at this point. But if you describe something as Mad Max in space, obviously mm. I'm going to buy it because I want to see that. I'm curious about this writer, too, because I don't think we've seen anything of his actually on screen. I think there was some sort of bidding war for Section 6, which Joe Cornish is supposed to direct, but I don't think that ever actually went into production. Mm. So I'm curious to see something from him before I can get too hyped about this. Yeah, it's very exciting, though, when you look at it from like an Alien or Aliens vibe, where it's this planet that was abandoned by a huge corporation, so now you just have crazy stuff running around in there, the post-apocalyptic feel. Now, the planet in the video game is called Pandora, so there's <laughs> another guy who makes a movie about Pandora and right. he's making a lot more of them, so you may have to change the name of the planet. I don't know if you, if you can copyright the name of a planet. Like, can I make a movie that has has a planet called Hoth in it, or would I probably get my H jeans? Hoth suit might off? be a little harder. I think you can make a you can make something called Pandora's box. That's been around for a long time. It's hard. There's a great Aerosmith it. box set, and Pandora's also a jewelry store. So there's a lot of Pandora's. If that out. was the next Avatar news story, though, right. I would love that. Uh -huh. James Cameron tries to copyright Pandora. Right. <laughs>
I would write that out. You know what? If it's James Cameron, you just kind of let the guy do what he's going to do, yeah. which includes making a crap ton of Avatar sequels. All right. That was it for Buy or Sell, I believe. Is that right, Ashley? Yes, sir. Breaking news. That's it for Buy or Sell. So now we go to <laughs> one of my favorite segments called Opening This Week. And I'm glad that we're talking about this movie and not some other movies that are coming out this week. Hit me, Ash. It's Keanu, recently Woo-hoo. dumped by his girlfriend, <laughs> slacker Rel, Jordan Peele, finds some happiness when a cute kitten winds up on his doorstep. <laughs> After a heartless thief steals the cat, Rel recruits his cousin, Clarence, Keegan-Michael Key, to help him retrieve it. They soon learn that a thug named Cheddar, Method Man, has the animal, and he'll only give it back if the two men agree to work for him. Armed with guns and a gangster attitude, it doesn't take long for the hapless duo to land in big trouble. I, uh, y- it was a great uh, description of the story, Ashley. You did a Thank fantastic you. job Thank reading you. it. <laughs> Key and Peele are nothing short of comedic geniuses. Their sketch show on Comedy Central was great. It sounds like a hilarious premise. That's all icing on the cake that is that adorable kitty. Look at that thing. Bring him I home. Am, I love cats to a weird degree. I'm a huge cat fan. And they are just the most adorable thing. And I guess it's just one cat, but they probably got like three or four of them to play the cats. There right? were two sets of kittens, actually. Two because sets. they each kitten had a different skill. You know, like this is like <laughs> the cute expression kitten. This is the running kitten. But then, because movies take a long time to make, those kittens got too old. So they had to have another litter of kittens come in and play the cat. Oh, wow. So how how many fact. kittens are in a set? I feel like the number was six or seven, but I might be wrong about that. Wow. That's inc- I want all of them. I just want all of them to take home. Like, Puss in Boots is the most adorable thing I've ever seen on the big screen. But this Keanu cat is right up there. And then, again, like, you combine it with all the other elements of this movie that seem to have positive buzz. I mean, they screened it at South by Southwest. And I heard that they, that they opened it by saying, hey, the movie's not finished yet, so we're just going to show it to you guys because we really want your feedback. And that people loved it, but it got a little long in spells. Since people have been seeing screenings of it after South by Southwest, I've heard nothing but positive buzz about this. Perry, have you had a chance to check it out? Can you I talk did. about it at all? I saw it at South by Southwest. And I mean, at this point, it really goes without saying that I love cats and dogs, but mm-hmm. I love cats and dogs. And <laughs> this movie was kind of made for me. The thing that I was worried about going into it was I'm so cat obsessed and that cat's so damn cute that I was going to be upset that whenever the cat wasn't on screen, I'm going to be like, oh, Key and Peele. Because I'm not that familiar with their comedy until this. <laughs> but, Boo! Bring you, back the cat! You know, well, I thought that that was going to be my reaction but you know what the two of them are fantastic in it it's about this whole mission to save the cat but everything that the characters go through they actually have a semi-legit arc there and I was very invested in them it's like kind of you know mean-spirited poking fun at everybody type of humor but it's done in such a heartfelt way like the two guys that the, the characters they play at least are so so lovable Schnepp, are Perry and I crazy for loving cats as much as we do? And do you think that Keanu looks like something you want to see opening weekend? Seeing as I have two cats, I'm a cat lover. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this film. I absolutely love this trailer. Uh, I think Key and Peel are co- comedic uh, geniuses. Mm-hmm. I love their show. So seeing, uh, you know, I've been looking forward to Key and Peel doing a movie together since I saw their, their series. Add the little flavor of Keanu. Add that. I mean, I think it's such... A perfect. I think. Yeah. I don't know who was who came up with the idea. They're like everybody watches cat videos on YouTube. Why not chuck a cat in there? Somebody was like, <laughs> Key and Peele were like, ching, and then add their flavor to it. Bam! It's like, I cannot wait to see this movie. So yeah, I'm hopefully seeing it Friday. Uh, Perry, something that Chef and I touched on yesterday because uh, we were going over the box office from last week and Jungle Book crushed again. It made sixty million dollars in its second week of release. Do you think that Keanu <clears throat> is has enough clout behind it and enough positive buzz? to take Jungle Book out as the number one movie? Or do you think it's going to be Jungle Book or Mother's Day coming in at number one? Ugh, Mother's Day. I can't even right now. Um, <laughs> there's no, there's like literally no cats. You're putting me on the spot here because I'm like a big nerd with those box office predictions. Yeah. I if, like my spreadsheet. I like to analyze. Like I actually do the math when I do that kind of stuff. You're free falling, man. No right. I know. Off the top of my head, I don't know because Jungle Book's got some serious steam behind it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, kid... At, are there any other kids' movies coming out? Is Ratchet and Clank? Ratchet and Clank is also this weekend. I don't, I don't yeah, think so. that's going to rattle Jungle Book at all, but I think maybe because Jungle Book is the only thing that's totally, totally family-friendly. I mean, Keanu is not for families at all, and Mother's Day just... I, uh, I, I can't say anything yet. Um, but I think you said it all. Fair. Yeah, pretty much. Here, let, well, let, let me say I something. I just screwed that up. I think Keanu's going to destroy Jungle Book. That one cat 
Just one cat will take out the entire jungle. And it's rated R. It, yeah. It's a rated R comedy. I think people get excited sometimes to go see a rated Hell R comedy. Yeah. I think the cute kitty is just gonna, it gets people mm -hmm. to stop and they look at the poster, they see Key and Peel, they hear about the premise. I think this movie is gonna be number one at the box office until the actual box office tells me differently. All right, now it's time for Mailbag. This is the part of the show where we get to hear from you guys. If you guys want to get your question read live on the air, simply email us at collidervideo at gmail.com. And we're also going to save some time at the end of the show for your live Twitter questions. Go ahead and tweet us right now at Collider Video and make sure you tell Ashley how lovely she looks today with that Thank awesome you. hair. What Call do we me got princess. First? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, your highness. What's our first mailbag question? Mon Curtis writes, Hey guys, love all the shows on Collider. Can't go a day without watching Movie Talk. My question is about the upcoming Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg film, Sausage Party. If the film is as good as the trailer is making it out to be, does it have a shot at winning an Oscar for Best Animated Feature Film, or would it not even be recognized due to the fact that it is an R-rated film, and most animated films tend to be more child-friendly? Thank and keep up the good work. I love this question. Thank you so much for writing it, Vaughn, because it's a great topic to talk about. Like, we all laughed our tails off at the Sausage Party trailer. So if this movie, it's going to be considered as an animated film, it's all animated. It doesn't matter what the rating is, right? It should be, it should just be weighed on how good or bad the movie is. And if it's that good, it's going to be competing against, like, The Secret Life of Pets or Finding Dory, I believe, comes out this year, too. So... I think this thing has a pretty good chance to be one of the five best animated movies of the year, right, Perry? This question, when I got the notes in my inbox this morning, had me laughing out loud at my computer. <laughs> this is another one that I got to see at South by, and there is no chance that this is ever going to get nominated for an Oscar. I don't care if everybody loves it and thinks it's the funniest thing. This is one of the most inappropriate movies I have ever seen in my entire life. Wow. And I mean that in the best way possible, because I'm a little sensitive when it comes to, you know, like like poop and fart jokes and Rachel jokes and sex jokes. Like sometimes that can push me a little too far and I don't like it. This is nonstop that and I was in tears the entire movie. Really? And I'll tell you, when you see a movie like Keanu and it's a work in progress versus an animated movie that's work in progress, the fact that this holds up so well when some of the frames were just sketches and not even animated, I mean, I can't wait for every, I can't, especially for you guys, I can't wait for you guys to see it. You're going to lose your minds. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it might not be your sense of humor, but Schnepp, you are a walking poop, fart, and sex joke. <laughs> yep. So do you think that Sausage Party has a chance of actually holding an Oscar? Sausages, <laughs> sausages. Remember, kids in the hall that like that short Sa sausages. Did you get my sausages? Sausages, or oh, yo, it's like a sausage party over here, yo. <laughs> anyway, um, I cannot wait to see this movie. I'm jealous that she got to see this film. Yeah. I cannot wait to see this film. When when are you going to invite me and Ellis to see Sausage Party, Rogan? Stop being a jerk. Get us in the theater. We'll talk about it. And uh, nah, I don't know. Whatever. We got to wait until August. Coming out. We got to wait until August. All right. It's not movie. that far, right? It's it's not that. It's I mean, like look, six look, months. I literally earlier in the show said that we have a year left to see Guardians of the Galaxy too. So I think you and I can hold out for a couple months. But as far as a film actually being nominated for an Oscar, does the crude factor eventually weigh against it? Particularly when you're talking about a category and like animated uh, yeah. is not a a <laughs> genre necessarily. It's not just for kids movies. It's anything that is animated. It should be considered. So, do you think Sausage Party is going to be fairly judged? I would love to see, like, Fritz the Cat didn't get an Oscar nomination. Like, when once you mm -hmm. reach that R rated and animated world, I mean, you got to remember the Oscars is 60 plus people. I mean, like, 60 years old plus. That's like, it's 6,600. 6,600 people are in the um, Oscar nomination ability. And a lot of the, like, I think it's like 70% of them are in their 60s. So, they might have a like a oh I don't want to see that animated bun that looks like a vagina that's horrifying <laughs> you know I don't know if that's going to get an Oscar nomination <laughs> uh, yeah for, 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 for the penises <laughs> I don't know if that's going to get an Oscar I can't wait to see this film if you laugh that much I, I can't imagine I was hysterical and let me tell you without spoiling anything the third act of this movie 
absolutely blew my I still, when I think about it, I can't believe someone got away with putting that in a movie. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, regardless of whether it actually ends up being nominated or recognized by the Academy, I think that everybody behind Sausage Party will have a ball making an Oscar campaign built around the fact that it should be nominated for Best Animated Feature. No, again, only one of us at the panel has even seen the movie. Ashley, do you think Sausage Party, I know you're looking forward to this movie. I'm so, and your description, Perry, made me like 10 times more excited. Like racial jokes, I love them. Sex jokes, love them. Poop, fart, <laughs> love it. So excited for this. And there's you no think, way. you think it should be considered by the Academy? I mean, if they know it's good for them, but there's no way this would ever be. The Oscars are so foo foo. Could you imagine them even consider? Oh, sausage party. And the winner oh is sausage party. <laughs> <laughs> no they way. don't hire the, the voters to go present the award. They, they have should. like young, virile celebrities go uh, up there and do it. They that would be amazing. Amazing Oscars, you just see people with walkers like, eh, please, I can't I have my spectacles. Please, I can't read the, the nominees. The numbers are yeah. 5, <laughs> 11, Lee Van Cleef, Matthew McConaughey, and 47. <laughs> And Sausage Party. And Sausage Party is the winner. I, know, I like sausages when they were Jimmy Dean. Sausages. What's our next mailbag, Ash? Wow. Sausages. Redmond Perone writes, Hello, everyone. <laughs> Been a longtime viewer. My question is about Louis C.K.'s supposed film, I'm a Cop. I remember you all discussing it when it was first announced, but there hasn't been any news about it since. Have you heard anything? Is it still coming out? Thanks. Still have not heard any recent updates on I'm a Cop. I can ask Louie next time I see him at the comedy store. Uh, but it's one of those things where it sounded like such a funny idea because the loose premise was that it's Louie is like, he's he's like a volunteer police officer and his mom was this very decorated heralded cop and so when she passes away he kind of looks at it as his personal quest to become a real cop and whether that's like go through the police academy or it's like a you, you know you don't know if they're going to take it in the vein of like a paul blart mall cop or like a let's be cops or what this is going to be but you got to think that with a guy like louis ck involved it's going to have a lot of comedic potential right most definitely i mean i I'm a giant fan of Baskets. I just finished watching that Zach Galifianakis series that mm -hmm. he's a producer and creator on, and I absolutely love it. And I, lo I loved Louie, and I think he's a comedic super talent. So anything he does, I'm going to go see. I hope it's in the can. I hope they secretly shot it. You know, He's been doing a lot of that stuff. All of a sudden, a series just shows up. You're like, when did what? I never heard of this. It's like, yeah, it's totally done. It's already on TV. So it'd be great to find out like next month, You know, I'm a Cop is going to just be in theaters or something. So. He really is a guy that's able to keep a low profile despite how famous he is. Yeah. Um, Perry, do you think that hey, we might already have some of this shot, or do you think we're ever going to see it? I guess you never really know. Uh, .com hasn't covered it in a year, and I don't think it's listed as anything but in development at this point so you know people keep things secret for all we know he was working out on it on the side but i'll see anything he touches mm -hmm. so i want it to come eventually but we don't know anything right now so you got you guys uh love him so much that you don't want to be like oh you maybe i don't like that premise i'd rather see him do something else you guys think this sounds like a winning enough premise for him to continue to do he, I think yeah. he he has enough uh, heart in his comedy mm -hmm. where it's actually almost like Key and Peele in Keanu. It's like they're really funny, like with that outlandish humor, but something about them still <clears> felt <throat> like real people. So I feel like if he does this, it's not going to be like Paul, Paul Blart Mall Cop. Yeah, right? anything, which is not what I anything want. Louis C.K. does, I'm going to go pay money for. It. Like I don't care what it's called. It could it it could come, say something. I'll tell me I'd see it. Uh, Come Paul Blart Mall Cop. And if it could start Louis C.K., I'm seeing it. I'd, okay, pay, I'd pay money. That's good. I actually giggled at the first Paul Blart Mall Cop. And I never saw the second one because I thankfully had like a convention to go to or something. But th there was one scene in the trailer for Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 that really made me laugh. So uh, if you tune out of the show now, I understand why. <laughs> I'm not going to hold it against you. Let's move I on might. to live Twitter questions. This is where you guys send in your tweets. Ashley has a few of them in the queue. Ashley, what is up first in the live Twitter section. Thomas Bergstrom writes, Sinatra turned 100 ye uh, years a few months ago. Why haven't we seen a biopic of him yet? Is it a rights issue? Who is turning 100 years? Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Uh, you know what? W with a guy that famous and that legendary, it's really hard 
to play somebody who's that famous. Like, there's mm. a reason why, you know, they, they've, they've taken stabs at making movies about the Beatles, and they always kind of cheat it where it's like, oh, the Beatles, but they're, like, really young, or right. you never see the Beatles at the peak of their fame because they're so recognizable. I think same thing with Frank Sinatra. There's probably somebody out there that could play Frank Sinatra, but can you do a great Frank Sinatra Vegas impression of him, but also act? like in a movie and carry on the scenes that don't involve him on stage singing him behind the scenes with the Rat Pack in his personal life. So it's a tough thing right. to balance. What would you call it? Old Blue Eyes? I mean, there's like a whole bunch of different cool titles you can come up with. I would love to see someone do a biopic about the Rat Pack, you know, because then you get all that flavor, Sammy Davis Jr. I mean, you know, that's that would be something that's more interesting to me. But I would see a Frank Sinatra biopic for yeah, sure. So would I. I'm surprised. Um, I'm sure there must have been a story about something like this floating around at some point. I right. mean, do a little research. I guarantee you, something's been tried at least at some point. Somebody just wrote on the on the chat room, and it's and it actually they they, they floated two names. And just just go with me on this, okay? And we might have oh, to wait boy. a little bit. We might have to let these guys naturally age older. But Leonardo DiCaprio, he's already got the blue. What does he have blue eyes? Doesn't matter. We we, we can get him contacts. <laughs> right. And Justin Timberlake. <laughs> I know Timberlake isn't the strongest actor, but he does have a lot of talent. He's got a lot of ability. So we can either age them. Or we can just wait 20 years and mm. just see if they get a little bit older and then they can play Frank Sinatra in a lot of different periods of his life. How about that? No, on both of them. You know what I would <laughs> okay. do? I would get that guy who was just in the, the Coen Brothers movie. That one actor who was kind of a brand new dude. He was like, played the, the cowboy. The, Alden Ehrenreich. Alden. I'd well, he might be a little busy if yeah. he gets a certain other role. Sure, if he's Han Galaxy Solo far, far away, or he's yeah. playing Harrison Ford clones for the rest of his life, but if he doesn't <laughs> end up becoming Harrison Ford's younger version of himself in seven different Indiana Jones or whatever, um, I'd say him, because he looks a little bit like Frank Sinatra, and I, I was blown away by that dude. That's so. not a bad choice. I don't really like Leonardo DiCaprio or Justin Timberlake, but if I was choosing between the two, I would pick Leo, because Justin's got such a distinct voice. I feel like I'd never be able to disconnect myself from that. Right. right. It'd be it, it sounds like it'd be like something an, a, an actor of high profile would take on if they're gunning for an Oscar. Like, this is my last chance to get an Oscar. I know, I'm playing Frank, and uh, you probably wouldn't win. And tomorrow, Leonardo DiCaprio is cast in a Frank Sinatra right? biopic. That's right. But the movie is upset at the Oscars by Sausage Party, Best Picture <laughs> winner. The best winner <laughs> is not Leonardo DiCaprio. It's Sausage's Party. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't look like Frank. Yeah, it looks weird. Does it say sausages? Frank. No, it didn't look like Frank. What's our next question? Angel Evtimov writes, if Mowgli wasn't in the Jungle Book, would it be considered animated if Mowgli was in the jungle book would it be considered animated that's a great question I'm saying no I'm saying no it is not an animated movie because like look you look at something like Star Wars or you look at something like a Marvel or a DC movie there's a lot of CGI that goes into that yes there's real people too but there's entire scenes that are CGI so I don't think you can separate the two doesn't it technically qualify as performance capture not if there's not humans. I there's mean, not who, even humans putting on yeah, the ping pong balls, like Running right? around to be wolves? No, I think yeah. they're just looking at footage and then emulating that or motion capturing real animals. Um, but yeah, it's it's that's a really interesting question because take Mowgli out and uh, it's just a, it's all 3D. It's all virtual. It's none of it is being is using any of the conventional. Uh, terms that we call a motion picture. There is that no animation? even like facial type of motion capture. Like obviously not their faces on the animals, but something where like their facial performance was kind of brought through. They, I don't believe so. They had some yeah. puppets stand in, but but that was all to help the the kid playing Mowgli. Act. They might have shot like when Ben Ben Kingsley was talking. They might have shot him. I don't know if they put all the little orbs mm -hmm. on his face. But you know, they, for animation, they use hey, you shoot somebody. When they're, when they're in the booth and you could use their face, you know, their hand gesticulations and their facial, turn, you know, that's, I mean, that's an old school way to do it, so. That's a really interesting topic, actually, because uh, I wonder what's going to happen when we do hit that point where movies are being made like that with no Mowgli, and then we come to the Oscars, and it's like, well, what do you do with this? Well, and then actually, we're it's a great question. We're lucky enough to have on the panel here today an actual live voter of the Oscars, Mr. Schnepp, <laughs> as a voter of the Oscars yeah. and a 100-year-old man. Do yes. you think that this animated movie could count? I would count it, even without Mowgli. <laughs>
Take that, Oscars. <laughs> Would Who Framed Roger Rabbit be an animated movie? Would that get nominated? That as, because you got live action actors in there, but there's a lot of animation, so it probably wouldn't. You know count, what? What right? you're no. What you're talking about is it's or Cool up, World. It's up or Cool World. It would be up to the studios how they would want to present it because it's all about promotion and present presentation. Like, hey, would you please nominate us for best? picture or if they're like no no you've seen that so many times that's why the martian won for best comedy no it's not that was a whole other reason <laughs> wah, wah. um yeah it's all about the way the studios want to present their film if they're like saying we want our lead actor to try to we think they might win as a supporting actor so let's get let's try to nominate him as a supporting actor you've seen that happen countless mm -hmm. times It'd be the same thing with your 3d film we're like no it's a real movie we want it to be to go up against all these other movies thing is it probably wouldn't get nominated yeah, well, you know, it's a worthy conversation to have, but I don't think the Jungle Book needs any more no. gold behind it. It's doing just fine. Ashley, what's our next question? Corey Scott Johnson writes, what about the Aladdin and Mulan live action movie? Aladdin and Mulan live action movie. We've heard rumblings of them rebooting Aladdin somehow for a while now, but it, whether they're going to do it live action or they want to do it like the Jungle Book action, which we don't really know how to quantify right now. I never saw Mulan. I never saw that might have been when I was just like I was old enough and I'm like I'm no longer seeing Disney movies in the theater mm -hmm. and then obviously I corrected myself and I was like oh no cartoons are sometimes the best movies so I'm, I need to go see every one so I missed Mulan I missed Hunchback and Notre Dame I missed Tarzan um, I don't know if you I, we get a live action Tarzan I don't know the story well enough about Mulan Ashley or Perry do you guys know it well enough would it be a good live action flick I didn't see Mu. I saw Mulan when it first came out when I was a kid, but it wasn't one of the ones that I kind of latched onto. Mm. Aladdin, on the other hand, I was mm. obsessed with Aladdin. I can vividly remember sitting in the theater as a kid, holding a little Abu and like a stuffed animal, <laughs> and oh just gosh. watching the movie. Yeah, it's really cute. Well, breaking news. Um, you know they have casting going on with Aladdin live action remake, and I'm actually Princess Jasmine. Oh, nice. wow, look at that. I, just, I thought you'd give you guys the insights. Hey, no, I'm totally lying because those would be like my dreams come true. Um, I would love a live action Aladdin movie. I'm not crazy about Mulan though. Again, I saw it when I was a kid, but it didn't stick with me like the other ones did. So like, I sure I'd like to see it, but it's not the top of my priority list, I guess. Shadab, I don't know that the live action Jasmine is gonna like poop and fart jokes as much right. as Ashley yeah. does. Uh, do you think that a Mulan <laughs> or Aladdin movie should be next in the queue as far as live action goes? I think Aladdin live action would be a great a great thing, you know. Uh, for myself, uh, Princess Mononoke is my Mulan. So, you know, and I don't want to see a live action Princess Mononoke. So, I would love to see an Aladdin done as live action. Yeah, I, I just, I, I got to ask about the genie. Like, I just, I, I don't oh, know yeah. what you do. We, mm -hmm. we don't have Robin Williams anymore to do it. And you cast uh, Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart to take uh, their role as the yeah, double genies. One, uh -oh. genie. <laughs> one genie, two heads. Yeah, yeah. It, it can be done. I, I like to explain what happened to that genie, or if you just reboot it entirely, it's just like it's just one of those roles. Where but you, you know just, what? I mean, the Aladdin story has been around forever. Yeah. And so, I mean, and there's countless movies that have Aladdin and the genie in it. It just so happens that the animated version with Robin, Robin Williams like really hit home and impacted everybody. So it's going to take something that much bigger. They're going to have to go the other way when they cast it. If they're going to have a comedic uh, actor, they have to go with someone who's not like Robin Williams just to, you know, go the other way. So. Yeah. So maybe Louis C.K., if you're not doing the cop movie, maybe you can be a genie in the live action <laughs> Aladdin. Ashley, let's do two more queries okay. today. Love Dagerborn writes, what is your favorite Clint Eastwood movie and why? Mm. Ooh, favorite Clint Eastwood movie and why? Um, I'm a huge Pale Rider guy. Nice. Uh, it's just such a great performance by him. Um, just him playing that the, the, the preacher. It's like, it just, it's everything great about Clint Eastwood in that movie. But then, uh, not, not even a decade later, we got Unforgiven, which mm -hmm. may be his most famous Western performance, even if you take all the spaghetti Westerns from the 60s. So it's between Unforgiven and Pale Rider for me. Uh, I know he was great as the, you know, the guy in the monkey movie driving the truck, but... He's, Every which way but loose. He's been great. It's got a title, Ellis. It's, it's the monkey movie where he's driving God a truck. Um, I, I, I'm trying to think of an Eastwood movie that's been great that he's not that it's not a western i know he's been in them right but i just the ones that and, and like like million dollar baby he was phenomenal in it's such yeah. a such a tough movie to what was the one watch. where he was playing the guy who's like I, i'm not gonna let the president get shot and like kevin spacey was a, in the was, line of fire yeah. that was a pretty john fun Malkovich, film yeah, yeah. That john Malkovich, movie yeah. was great so that was my impersonation who, <laughs> impersonation of john Malkovich. Nailed and it. yeah kevin, hey i'm gonna try to kill the president yeah right? and then clint Eastwood was like, no you're not and i'm gonna run across some buildings 
rooftops and jump and stuff. Remember it's, that? Hey, you know what? Watch the end of the movie. I think Clint did just fine. Perry, your favorite Clint Eastwood performance. Million Dollar Baby is up there. I went mm. through a weird thing with Gran Torino, though, where I watched that over and over it's and over. It's a great film. I, it's a great film. I think I just got overly obsessed with it because mm. that's kind of... When did that come out? Is that like 2008? Yeah, 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 that's kind of when I was ago. first like getting my career going. So at that time, I felt the need to watch every uh, potentially nominated movie over and over and over. So I did watch that quite a bit. And I still watch it now. All mm -hmm. right, so we got Gran Torino, we got Pale Rider, and then uh, what's yours? Well, uh, or do you want to take any which way you can but lose? Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> maybe Dirty Harry, you know? I mean, I think... Yes! Sorry that none of you guys mentioned the most hmm. classic Clint Eastwood movie ever. Um, but uh, yeah, the first Dirty Harry film and the second one as well. Um, I love Unforgiven, so I'm glad you mentioned that one. I love all the spaghetti Western films, the Sergio Leone ones, the three that he did. Um, probably the... The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is one of my favorites out of those, the, you know, the, the 60s Westerns. But Unforgiven is really just, I think, a masterpiece. So Oh, it's so, yeah, I watched it recently on a plane. It's just, it's so good. Movie trivia schmodown question for you guys right oh, now. Boy. Buzz in if you know it. Right. Nope. What is the Dirty Harry movie where he actually says the line, do you feel lucky? Uh, the Dirty Harry movie is, uh, do, yeah. do you? Yeah, where he actually says the line. Well, do you, do you punk? Yeah. Um, it is the, uh, I want to say it's the does the chat board one. know it? Does anybody know it? We're building suspense. Yeah. I'm still talking. <laughs> Nobody's buzzing in yet. Dirty hair. I believe the answer is Sudden Impact. Nice. I'm pretty sure it's is Sudden Impact. Is that the fourth one? Yeah, it's like an 80% chance it's Sudden right. Impact. I don't know where it is in the pantheon of the movie. Do you feel lucky? Snap. Well, I just do you, Ellis? The guy was in a movie with a monkey in a truck. Okay, our last Twitter question of the day is... It's Sean. not a monkey, it's an orangutan. <laughs> it comes from Sean K. And he writes, with two big summer movies being released within a month of each other, will this be Margot Robbie's big breakout year? Uh, it's hard to say it's going to be her big breakout year when she's kind of already so well known but as far as being a versatile actress like we know the name margot robbie and we believe that she has a lot of great performances in her but i think this could be the year that solidifies that where it's like yeah she can do a, a variety of different things like it was great to meet her in wolf of wall street i really enjoyed her scenes but then seeing her actually as an actress i think maybe in that vein yes 2016 could be her breakout year right right i mean besides suicide squad what's the other film that she's doing that's a question. The answer is sudden impact. Sudden impact. Yeah. <laughs> do you feel lucky? Yeah. Well, do you? She's got Robbie? a few movies coming out this year. But yeah, she's a. She's she a, was just in Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she was just pretty good in that. And she had Z for Zachariah. I mean, Wolf of Wall Street was definitely the breakout that I think right. made her close to a household name. But getting beyond that to the point where people actually believe that she's a good actress, you know. How many people saw Z for Zachariah? Not no, very many. No, but no. if Suicide Squad and this other mystery movie comes out this year and that shows that she's oh. got the acting chops, then... The Legend of Tarzan. Oh, she's also there it in is. Tarzan. Where, yeah, I mean, she's... she's Christoph playing, Waltz. She's playing Jane of, Porter. Yeah. So she's playing Jane to the Tarzan Jane. So it's going to be interesting how they utilize Margot Robbie in that movie. If she's there to actually serve a purpose. or Because Jane wasn't always the biggest contributor to Tarzan movies. Pretty much like this is the object of Tarzan's affection. And then occasionally she'd get something fun to do or say. If Margot Robbie, and I believe Margot Robbie would take this role knowing that she actually has a lot to do. So I'd like to see her in Tarzan. I just hope that they use her talents correctly. Correctly. I would like to hope so. They're going to get a lot of crap if they just, you know, make her the object of me, his Jane. In the entire yeah, time. I don't think I don't think they're going with <laughs> a me, a Jane, really you yeah. ape man. Yeah, let's, that's let's not hope gonna not. <laughs> let's hope not. And I would like to hope that you guys come back tomorrow because you had such a great time here today on Collider Movie Talk. I want to thank everybody both behind the camera. We got Jonathan over there. We have Adam. We have Wendy. We have Dennis. We have Mark Riley. And Christian is probably using the restroom. Also, I want to thank everybody in front of the camera. I'm going to start out with my good friend, Academy voter, the old codger himself, John Schnapp. My sausages. <laughs> you can find me on the interwebs at John Schnapp. Is it on, web TV? It's What's our password? It's Twitter and Instagrams. Whatever those things are, you can connect to me. Bye. <laughs> that was a hell of a promotional opportunity. <laughs> Follow him on Twitter at John Schnapp, right? Yes, Mark okay. Ellis. <laughs> we got Grandpa Sausages. Twitter account, and Sausages. I regret it every day. Sausages. Perry, where can the kids find you? You guys can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at PNemeroff. So now that we've got this covered, no mob movies, war movies, or Clint Eastwood movies, and I will come down on the Shmodown once. We'll see, though. <laughs> we look forward to it, as do all the fans out there. And Ashley, we'd love to see you on the Shmodown, too. In the meantime, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Ashley Move. And actually, on Thursday night, the personal question game. Ah. That's right. We got a little surprise for all you watching the Schmoes No Movie Show, which is live every Thursday night from 7 
to 9 p.m. PST. You're going to have a cameo from some of your favorite faces here at Collider, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I thought uh, it was revealed already. I have Sausages. no idea. Yeah, some Sausages. people already tweeted me about it already. Then check it out. Go watch on Thursday. <laughs> watch gonna, it on F-M Thursday. love it. Uh, you're also going to love amctheaters.com. That's where you go for your latest box office and showtime information. AMC. Make sure you guys go to collider.com. Bookmark the page there. That's where we get all of our movie scoops that we brought to you guys here today. And Collider Video. You're watching us right now on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe to that channel and make us feel all warm and gooey inside. I love My collider. name is Mark Ellis. This weekend, I will be at the Albany Funny Bone in upstate New York. Then I'm also going to be at the Minneapolis Acne Comedy Club and the Houston Improv coming up. Mark Ellis Live on Twitter. That's all for me today. Thank you guys so much. And We'll see y'all tomorrow. Hey, MC Hey, sausage. guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.